Are you sure you want to do this? Hi guys, my name's Barry and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be doing a review for Alien Romulus today. Now, I can't really do this review without talking about the spoilers and the ending of the film. So if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, then don't watch this video. However, if you don't mind spoilers, or if you've seen the movie, then continue watching. The gang, led by Tyler, are all part of a mining colony on a planet that looks very similar to Saturn. I thought it was Saturn to begin with, but it's clearly not because this planet is 65 light years away from Earth. And I had to double check that Saturn, our Saturn, is actually only 0 0.00015 light years away from Earth, so it's definitely not Saturn. They're sick of working on this mining colony where they've got no sunlight and they're made to work their whole entire life. Although there's no sunlight, there is sun above the clouds. The clouds are very thick and they're living in complete darkness all the time. So they want the help from someone called Rain and her synthetic human called Andy in order to go up to this space station that's derelict and try and get access to these cryopods that will help them go to cryo sleep so they can reach the destination that they want to and they won't age. The reason that they want to do that is because they want to go to a planet where there's some daylight and they won't have to work the rest of their lives. The reason that they need Andy because he is a synthetic human is he'll have access to certain areas on certain ships because they're owned by Wayland and he has one of his properties. Once they get to the station, all is going well because they do find the cryo pods they also find some fuel that will help them charge the cryopods as well until they unleash by accident the facehuggers <laughs> after releasing the facehuggers all hell breaks loose navarro is the first to have the xenomorphs eggs laid inside her by the facehuggers we see that in the trailer anyway and we also find out that k one of the people on the ship is pregnant, so that's a bit of foreshadowing for the end of the movie. We get a surprise cameo from Ian Holmes's synthetic human called Rook, who was in the original Alien from 1979. And I thought it was just going to be like one scene he was in, but he actually does play a bigger role in the film than I thought he would when I first saw him. He's still trying to complete his original mission and sending these xenomorph samples back to wherever he wants them to go, back to his people, so that they can use it to save human lives. According to him, they test this stuff on different animals and stuff and it brings them back to life and helps them if they're broken bones or whatever and that's what's supposed to happen with this blood with this bio stuff that they use however we find out later on that that's not what it does Kay gets badly injured near the end of the film and she has no other choice but to inject this stuff into her neck in the hopes that she'll survive because she's also trying to save her baby as well. It seemed like it worked because her, Rain and Andy make it back to the ship so they can set off into cryo sleep. But before that happens, Kay starts to hurt, get hurt and Rain has a look at her and she's went from being newly pregnant to full cycle. She then gives birth to what could only be described as a cross between a xenomorph and an engineer from the Prometheus movie. This part of the finale is pure nightmare fuel. The film ends properly with no tease of a sequel, which I appreciate because if they decide to do a sequel to this film, which I hope they do, they're not backing themselves into a corner with what happened at the end of the film because nothing is teased at the end. If they want to do a sequel, they can go on whatever path that they decide to do. Like all Fede Alvarez movies, you're on the edge of your seat for most of the film. I think for the first half an hour of Romulus, it's quite slow and I think that's important because we don't know any of these characters, apart from Rook of course, but we don't know any of these new characters, so there's no point in giving us no backstory for these people. So for the first 30 minutes, we're just getting to know all the characters and I appreciate that they've done that because without knowing who they are, we wouldn't really care for them for the rest of the movie. There's some really intense moments in this film. There's quite a lot of intense moments, in fact. And just one example is there's a scene where we find out that you can turn the gravity on and off in the space station. And, you know, with the aliens, they, they bleed acid. If the acid goes down to the floor, they're on the bottom level of the station. So if the acid goes through that floor, everyone's going to get sucked out. So they can't let the acid drop onto the floor. Now, 
there's about six or seven, maybe eight aliens coming towards Rain in one of the scenes and she turns the gravity off. And the reason for doing that is because she starts shooting the aliens and any of its blood, the acid, doesn't fall, it just floats. And after she's killed these aliens in front of her, the gravity is still off, but it's only off for a certain amount of time. So she has to float through the acid without touching it, of course, to the end of that dock before the gravity goes back on because when it does, all the acid will fall to the floor and that part of the station will just disintegrate and blow out. Romulus has by far the best sound design of 2024 so far, of course, because we've got a few months left, but the sound design was absolutely fantastic. You've got a really nice mix of the Alien 1979 score. You feel like you're really there in that original movie and then when you mix that with the modern sound design it was fantastic. I love that they stuck with the 1979 futuristic technology. You know back in 79 when you watched Alien, well I didn't, but back in 1979 Alien came out and they had this futuristic technology which is very dated today but they stuck with that. They stuck with that technology in Romulus and it makes us feel like that whole world is still part of Alien. I know you've got some sequels where they were still good, but you felt like you're a, you were distanced from what we saw in the original movie, and they don't do that in Romulus. You do feel like it's still maybe the same day. That's how great it was. The practicals and the CGI were on point. Now, I don't know the specifics of how much this movie cost. I would imagine it would cost no more than $80 million. It might have cost a lot less than that, but with the practicals and the CGI that, you, that they used in the movie, I thought they were phenomenal. We get that familiar, claustrophobic, more intimate feel to Romulus than we did in the previous films that we've gotten, and it goes all the way back to the original. The original felt intimate and claustrophobic as well, with a really small cast, and Romulus goes back to that. I have to say though, guys, I was expecting big things for Romulus, and I think Fede Alvarez delivered for, for me because it felt like Evil Dead in space. My only concern for this is for diehard fans of the Alien franchise who wanted to move away from those Prometheus type movies, might not like the ending of the film with what Kay cooked up in her stomach at the end of the film because it was that hybrid of that xenomorph and the engineer. I, I don't even think it was an engineer, but it certainly looked like the engineer and it might have been but I think maybe some fans of the Xenomorph won't like the end of this film, but I think if you want to progress in the Alien franchise, especially with what we've seen in some of the movies, I don't think just seeing a Xenomorph is enough for the Alien franchise to move forward. So when they mix that in with the engineer style Alien, then I think it's for the best. And while I do appreciate the Xenomorph fanatics, I feel like what they concocted at the end of this film. It was absolute nightmare fuel. The film follows the same beats as the original. It even structures the film entirely exactly like Alien from 1979, right up until the very end when the final girl suits up in that spacesuit to defeat the final alien. If you can't beat the original movie, honour it and that's exactly what Romulus did. So what are your thoughts on Alien Romulus, guys? Did it exceed your expectations or was it not as good as you thought it was going to be? And what did you think of that xenomorph slash engineer hybrid that we got at the end of the movie? Leave your comments down below, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. I'll be right back. What are you waiting for, huh? I'm coming to get you, Barbara. Everplane. Skin the cat. Ah! Ah! Someone's in the back!